we'll take a look at using the repeating group element in Flexi Layout Studio. That element is found down here. Let's start by adding an image. And it's a one-page document. Um, I'll adjust my zoom here. And what we want to capture is the part number and the description. And we can't capture this in a table format, so we're going to have to use a repeating group. Since this is a one-page document, I'm going to go ahead and disable my footer. And I'm going to add a simple um, static text element. I'll make it required for my header. And I'll just go ahead and grab repeating group image. Abby, multi Abby Flexi Capture, and our, I'll permit multiple lines. And I'll name that form ID 1, keyword form ID 1. It's required. And then I'm going to proceed in a manner as if I don't know what repeating groups are about, as if I've never used them before. And I'm going to fall into a few pitfalls and then work my way out of them. So I'll go ahead and start by creating the element repeating group. And I will call this repeating group car parts. And that is a group, so it can contain elements. And I will start with a static text element. I will call this keyword part number. And I will look for the string part number. And that will give me a start. So I've got a repeating group, and I'm looking for part number. I'm going to go ahead and match and see what my results look like. So first off, I found my header. And then this is my repeating group element. I'll click here. And interestingly, the very first thing that happens is the repeating group found the first, the second part number. It skipped the first. Then it found the third. Then it found the fourth. And then it jumped up and found the first one. And this last repeating group node is empty. I'm not going to worry about that for the time being. Why was this part number instance found before the first instance? It's because of quality. The second part number was OCR'd with a little bit better quality, and Flexi Layout Studio selected it for that reason. So in order that in order for me to find data in the correct order, I'm going to use the nearest to function. So I will go to my part number and I could say nearest to page top edge, but that could get me in trouble for multi-page documents. So it'll keep looking on every page top edge for every page, and that could give me branching. So instead, I'm going to look for an element, and I'll simply look for my header element. Let's apply and match and test this again. And we'll see that now we found first that part number, then the second, then the third, then the fourth, then the fifth. OK, and I just turned show search area on so that we can see that once we find something, we can't find it a second time. It's removed from our search area. So there's no overlapping within repeating groups. Next, I will capture the actual part number using a character string. I'll call this part number. And I'll use relations. So relative to the current instance of keyword part number, the, the instance that, um, not the first instance, not the last instance, but the current instance of this iterative repeating group, that's what I want to key off of. And it's a default setting. And I simply want to look to the right of the right boundary with an offset of, say, 20. 
and I'll switch this to all so we can see our area, search area. And actually 20 is too aggressive. I'll change that down to 10. Now we can see our search area starts after the colon and before the number. I'll add that relation and then I'll duplicate it. And I want to look to the left of the right. Um, and I'll just measure. If I look at the bottom of my screen, I see the word dot, I see the word select tool, and I see 213 by 3. So this line, that's the dimensions of this line. So I can enter in 250 dots, but that's moving in exactly the wrong direction. So I need to make this a negative offset. And now we can see that that's, um, uh, that's really where we want to look. And if I highlight both relations now, we can see that we're getting close to having a good search area. And go in and supply the other two relations. So I'm also going to say above bottom with an offset, say, of minus 10. And interestingly, we can see this relation occur for each iteration. That's very helpful. And I'll duplicate that and say below bottom, sorry, below top. And same thing, we can see that this line is in a good place for every iteration. Now I'll highlight all the document, all the uh, relations, and we can see highlighted in green our first search area, but we can also see our second, third, and fourth search areas. I'll hit apply and OK. Now let's match our document and see what our results look like. So we can double click on the repeating group and I see trouble right away because I don't have this many instances. Let's click through and see what's going on. We'll open up the first instance. First we find the part number keyword and then the actual part number value. I'll hit the backspace key, go to the second document. I can already tell that that's good. Go to the third iteration, I should say, not document. And then the fourth document, I'm sorry, iteration. And next we have a problem. So we didn't find the part number. So there's no relations for the software to go on. So to fulfill my request, it just went to the top of the document and said, here's a string. But that's not really what I want. And I certainly don't want the data to go start searching at the top of the document. I want to search in a downward motion.